Hi guys, so this week we are going to be working on writing a CV and a cover letter personal statement. All of this is going to be very important for you to um, get yourself a little job because you guys are 16, you might want some money or simply apply to uh, colleges, sixth form or university later. So some places will ask you to fill in an application form rather than uh, giving in a CV. And the documents you will need to provide or the information you will need to provide is as follow. Personal information, disability, medical information. It sounds worse than it is. Residential status. Now, that's a point I will have to make uh, a bit more in depth. Uh, school and qualifications, work and work experience, personal statement and references. Very, very important. Uh, conviction. I do not believe that this um, applies to any of us, but unfortunately, this is something that will be asked of you. So let's start with the personal uh, information. So surname, your last name. Uh, and then when it comes to your first name, they might ask you several things. So full name is the same thing as first name. Then you've got some middle names. Uh, in Christianity, it's very common to have middle names. Uh, then the given names is the name that you have been given at birth, but not necessarily the one that you are using a uh, Christian name is exactly the same. Um, now, they probably will ask you for proof of identification and stuff like your passport or, you know, any any type of identification. So it is important that you are given the right information. They will ask you what name you want to be called if you have a username. But please, when you fill in forms and when they're official, use whatever is on your birth certificate. Your title, extremely important. So, guys, uh, you've only got Mr. Uh, for us, girls, um, we can choose between Mrs., Miss and Ms. So, Mrs. is married. Miss Simona, you are young. You can use Miss. And Ms. would be somebody like me who has got a certain age and who is divorced. Uh, gender, you're allowed to not say. Uh, date of birth, it's also called DOB. Um, please make sure that you enter the digit in the right way. Address, postcode, very important. Landline is the phone that some people have got in our house, uh, even though nowadays most of us simply have a mobile number. And then finally, the email. When you start applying for job for colleges, I would advise you to have a serious email address, not something like this. Um, it is very common when you're young to have a funny email address. However, when you start applying, have something like your first name dot your last name, like mine, I know, boring, uh, but it does look a lot more professional. Another part of the information is something extremely important, and that is your next of kin. So your next of kin is more likely to be your parents, you will need to tell what relationship it is and then details is usually just uh, a phone call. Uh, as you're underage, it's more likely that it's going to be your parents. You can have a couple um, of contacts, um, but usually your parents is what it's going to be. Now, disability and medical information, they will need to have your doctor's uh, contact details. Probably not at application path, but certainly when you uh, accept um, the, the, your place at college or at university, because they will need to know if you've got some medical condition or they will need to simply contact your doctor if anything happens to you. Then they will ask you if you're registered disabled. 
uh, if there's anything in your medical history uh, that they need to know. And that is simply because they want to know if they can cater for you. Now, in the section of do you have any special needs, I would urge you to write E-A-L, okay? Uh, English as an additional language falls under the special need category. And I would urge you to write this down. Now, residential status uh, in the midst of uh, Brexit is something that is extremely important to us. They will ask you if you've lived outside the UK other than holiday during the last three years. Now, I am Gosha, that concerns you. Um, if you say yes, they will ask for your date of entry to the UK. Uh, they will need a photocopy of your passport, uh, entry, visa, whatever. Uh, they might also ask you if, and that would be um, Gaucher's and Simona's uh, situation, if you got your settled or pre settled, st settled status. Um, it is literally just um, an email to forward. Um, ask me more if you are uh, worried. At the stage of your application, they will not ask it, but at some stage it will come out. Uh, as you are 16, they might ask you if you have your national insurance number. You guys uh, were not born in the UK, so you would not have a national insurance number straight away. Uh, you would need to ask for it, but it is just a little formality. Right, they're going to ask you about school and they're going to ask you about your qualifications. Even if you haven't got any at the moment, they're going to ask you what it looks like. So here's the school address. It's extremely important that you are aware of it. You need to list all of your subjects and you need to write your actual or your predicted grade. So actual means you already have it. And predicted mean that's what you should get. Do not forget to include some of your school abroad. So for example, uh, if when you were back home, you achieved a qualification, write it down and write the name of your school. Just put the country between brackets. Um, it is very important and they are used to it. Uh, additional school responsibility that doesn't really concern any of you. It would be if you are prefect or are the uh, captain of the netball team of things like this. Now, unfortunately, because of COVID, none of you have done work experience, but you might have some experience of work and they will ask for the name of your employer, their address, date of employment and the brief job description. Um, that will not count against you if you haven't got a job or if you haven't done work experience. Uh, because of the situation the country is in at the moment. So do not worry about this. Right, so there will also be a section that is called personal statement. At the moment, we are not doing it. This is what we will do in our second lesson. Now, references. Uh, they will ask you for two references. They will ask for their name, their position, their address and the phone number. At present, there's four people that could write your references. Mr. Ahmed, Ms. Savic. Uh, Mr. Patel and myself. Uh, guys, keep my name, keep my email address. As far as I'm concerned, I've been teaching 20 years. I still write references uh, for jobs for students that I've stopped teaching 10, 15 years ago. Um, it is extremely important that whatever we say will actually de describe how you guys are. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, this is the part where uh, I'm hoping you guys are going to say no. 
Uh, this is usually appearing when you applying for a job. They're asking you if you've got any criminal conviction. Right, guys, uh, a criminal conviction could simply be a speeding uh, ticket or a parking ticket. Uh, be honest, if that's the case. Uh, they will just need to know. Now, here I am giving you the choice of either filling in a form online or completing a fake real application form and then uploading it back to me. Uh, guys, I'd like you to do this very seriously because I will correct any mistake. We do need to start applying for colleges um, and maybe jobs. So do it properly, I'll correct it and then I'll give it back to you and then that will just be quite helpful.